Race is not sort of some sort of side issue in, in American news media. It's, a, it's always been a central issue from the very first printed word. Being able to tell your story is a powerful thing. And you get to define your reality, you get to control the dissemination of your own image. And when other people uh, control the story, uh, they often tell, uh, they often just get it wrong and it causes great harm. issues that we need to deal with in our community, the economic inequality, uh, all the issues of disparity and inequality in our, in, in our communities we're unable to deal with, we're unable to address, and media affects the public discourse. And the public discourse affects what the political agenda is in your local government, in your national government, in your state government. In recent months I've traveled the country, I've been all over the East Coast, the West Coast, and no matter where you go, you turn on the television, some of the images you see are like images of uh, black men being arrested, uh, black folks in handcuffs, uh, Latinos uh, crossing the border, seeing them some sort of uh, invading force into our country as some sort of threat uh, to society. Uh, these are the typical images you see far too often on not only local television, but national television. The, the, the fight for a just media system, in many ways, regardless of race, but I especially for people of color, it's been about just the basic right to be able to speak for yourself, to be able to tell your own story, to, to, to uh, inform your community about what's the, what's the reality happening in your neighborhoods and uh, with your family, with, your, with uh, members of your community. And, uh, but too often uh, when it comes to the media, uh, we are unable to tell our stories. And as a result, you see those kind of images on TV, a distorted reality. The reason Juan Gonzalez and I wrote this book, back in, in, starting in the late 1990s, in the early 2000s, it was, it was a tremendous amount of media mergers going on. And, and as journalists of color, Juan and I, we started to ask ourselves, um, first of all, this is not good for journalism. Consolidation results in less newsroom jobs. It results in poor news coverage, homogenized uh, radio programming, uh, just uh, inferior quality of news. And, but two, what is the impact on communities of color? And for one, we own very few radio and TV stations. And this whole, this whole thing we're talking about, the ability to tell our own stories, uh, ownership is critical. And so we wanted to uh, educate our members in Hispanic journalists and other journalists of color and other journalists, period, that we have to get involved in media policy. We want more quality news. We want quality journalism. Uh, we have to deal with policy. We have to deal with the decisions government makes, makes on who owns what. The first colonial newspaper in our country was in 1690. It was the public occurrences printed by Benjamin Harris in the Massachusetts colonies. And in it, he had several stories about Native Americans. He described Native Americans as barbarous, as savages. Um, the Boston Newsletter, the first continuous newspaper in our nation's history, found in the early 1700s, talked about African Americans were addicted to stealing and lying. The two things that they were concerned about these early colonial newspapers, one was uh, you know, African slaves and, and um, whether it was uh, 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 issues of, of violence, slave insurrections, or Native Americans, Native Americans attacking white settlers. They were also very concerned about African uh, slave populations, like the actual physical number of people actually living in southern states or in, in colonial uh, northeast, and just um, you know, the increasing number of African slaves living amongst the settlers. They were concerned about that. So uh, this, again, this is the prototype of what was to come. Papers like the, New the National Advocate uh, were running all sorts of uh, coverage that lampooned and mocked uh, black intelligence. And so to combat this racism in, in the new newspapers, a group of, uh, of free blacks gathered in New York City to discuss what to do about it, and they decided to create the first newspaper, Freedom's Journal and it was 1827, and in the first issue of the paper, uh, they stated the reason why they found the Freedom Journal. We wish to plead our own cause. Too long have others spoken for us, from the press and the pulpit. We have suffered much by being incorrectly represented. People have been fighting for a just media system for a long time, right? But it's also tragic that people have been fighting for a just media system for a long time. And those very sentiments expressed then 
are still true today. And, and that's tragic. That is the tragic part of it, particularly when you look at, uh, uh, you know, people of color within the next few decades, by 2042, can make up the majority of the U.S. population, and yet we are unable to plead our own cause.